brothers and sisters in Christ, we want to take this chance to welcome you to our study today. May you feel like Jesus' feet. We are two of us. With me is Brother Ochuka Stallone. Ochuka Stallone. My name is Elder Tyra Somondi. I will ask you, Brother, to open with us with a word of prayer. Fine, let's believe as we pray. Mighty Father who lives in heaven, glory and honor be to you. Even as we come into this study, may you grant us understanding through the Holy Spirit, so that through the word we might be drawn to thyself. May we see the dear Son Jesus Christ throughout this study, for this our Jesus name, let's be living. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you, brother. Uh, we are in our lesson two, uh, talking about the central issue, and uh, he's highlighting, is it love or is it selfishness? Is it me or it is us? Or it is, is it them? Uh, we know we are in the lesson that talks about the great controversy, which is a battle between doing good and doing bad or doing evil, the forces that exist that pushes men to continue being good people or pushes them also on one side or pulls them on one side to do evil. The tendency to do evil is in us. The tendency to do good is imputed in us. It is given to us by Christ through grace. We are always tempted to sin. And uh, when we talk about the central issue, it is the circle. It is the core. It is the, the place where issues crops or rises from. Um, the, our key text is in the book of... Uh, um, Isaiah chapter 41 verses 10. Maybe you can just read. Isaiah, Isaiah 41 verse 10. Yes. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Uh, we thank God for the prophecies that were written in Isaiah, brothers and sisters, because these prophecies are still true to us even today. The promises that God is with us, the promises that we should not be dismayed, the promises that God will strengthen us, the promises that God will help us, the promises that God is there to uphold us with his righteous hand are still true to us today, irrespective of the circumstances that we are going through, irrespective of the challenges that we are facing, these promises still stand, and we can claim them through prayer, through faith, through trusting in God. And you know, uh, when Jesus was with his disciples, he tells them that uh, I am seeing a future full of persecution. I'm seeing a future where there will be destruction of this beautiful uh, city called Jerusalem and there was a temple in Jerusalem which was mag magnificently built and Jesus is telling them that one day this temple will be brought down into ruins and no stone will be found standing on another and 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 you know disciples are amazed and and uh, they are not accepting this situation and they're saying no when will these things happen and that is our study today in the book of Matthew chapter 23 and 24, in the book of Luke chapter 19, uh, the disciples were amazed and they were like, uh, how can you say that uh, it costed us almost 46 years to build this sanctuary and it was not very possible for us to erect it up. And when it was even though it was not in the glory of the former sanctuary, but we are delighted in it because it costed us so much. You know, at times we may invest so much in this world that we forget that there can come a time when what we have invested in, we can lose. Sometimes we can invest even in our businesses, in our works, in our academics, to the extent that we lose, even in our children, we lose the focus on who gives us the strength to invest and we start focusing on the investment. And this is what the disciples and the Jews were talking about. I'm hearing a herdsman on an evening on, on, on Mount Olive, which was like facing Jerusalem and they are like looking into Jerusalem. The sun is setting there and the sun is passing through the windows and by the sides of the stones on the walls of the of, of, of the temple of the, uh, at Jerusalem, and the magnificent were like, I don't think if Jesus is true. I don't think if Jesus is saying the truth. And you know, uh, Jerusalem was prophesied in Daniel that it was going to be destroyed. 
and when the day came for the destruction, the Romans came for this destruction. And therefore, it was Satan's deception that led the people to mistrust, to don't believe in the words of Jesus. Jesus tells them that this, this Jerusalem, this temple will be destroyed, but in their own hearts, because the devil is speaking louder in their hearts and their mind and their life, more than the words of God as written in the Bible, they could not believe this. I don't know what you can add on this introduction. Thank you. Just to add on the introduction from what you've said, we are seeing now Satan using a twofold method to deceive God's people. And number one is uh, making them to, is deceiving them to be destroyed. To the extent Christ had already given them or foretold or foresaw the destruction of Jerusalem, but Satan is now trying to make it like it is not possible to be the way they were thinking, like this thing, it's not that very real. The way you've said, after investing for 46 years, how can this thing be done within a day? Yeah. And Christ is saying, no stone will remain upon the other. He's explaining the nature of the destruction. Yeah. No stone will remain upon the other. And also we are seeing some spirit of compromise. And uh, that's what is leading mainly to the destruction as we'll study in front there. Yeah. Uh, how the church is, or the Israel is now beginning to compromise the truth, getting into the world and everything. And now the prophecy had to come to pass. But all in all, from the key text, Christ is saying, fear not, for I am with you. Amen. We thank God because uh, we are going to look at how the devil has been uh, manipulating his strategies. If he, if, 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 if he found that persecuting you uh, does not work, then he ensure that he can deceive you into compromise. And um, this really did not make Jesus happy. Yeah. You know, Jesus was seeing them and knowing that after this destruction, if they are found here, some will be killed. Yeah. If they are found here, some will be disheartened. If, if, if I give them a warning, and Jesus tells them that when you see the Jerusalem surrounded, yeah, if prophecy is spoken by 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 Daniel, hey, Daniel yeah. let us run out, come out of the cities. The message is always come out, come out of this place because uh, it will not be very good for the Christians. You know, God sometimes sends us warnings, sends us messages to prepare us so that we may live a life that is in benefiting us. Uh, not because uh, God wants us to benefit, but because we were created to benefit. And, and, and sometimes by choices we make, we dishearten God. And our, our, the, the, the Savior, the writer of the lesson is saying, I was a very heartbroken person. Let's read from the book of Matthew chapter 20, uh, 23. Uh, open the book of John chapter 5 verse 40 as I open uh, Matthew 23. Uh, John 5.40, Matthew 23. Yes. John 5, verse number 40. Yes. And it says, And he will not come to me that he might have life. That he may not come. Coming to Christ gives us light. Gives, yes. uh, it's, it's the light of the world. Yeah. It is the, 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 uh, the morning star. Uh, 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 Matthew 20, 23, verse 35 and 38. Uh, Jesus speaks and says, O Jerusalem. Jesus laments over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and the stones, uh, those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Verse 38, see, your house is left unto you desolate. desolate. You know, these words are words of uh, closing of probation. These words are words of judgment, pronouncing judgment. These words are words which we will not want to hear in our lives. That because I have struggled to enable you understand, struggled to make you live a good life, but you have refused, and therefore I am leaving you. You know, sometimes we say, uh, my God is with me. My God is with me all the time. Not knowing that sometimes God may decide not to be with us because we've chosen not to be with, with him. We remember in um, the Old Testament, uh, the King Isa is told that if you will be with the God of your forefathers, your father worshiped the God of heaven. If you be with him, he will be with you. 
If you don't, then he will leave you. And therefore, God does not uh, always intervene to limit the result of his people's choices. When we choose to obey, we receive his blessings. Deuteronomy 28 talks about this very clearly. If we choose to disobey, then he allows the consequences of disobedience to come to us. And this is why the Savior is not happy when we are receiving the consequences of our disobedience. The consequence of our disobedience is eternal destruction. And he came to die for us so that we may not be eternally be destroyed or lost. Maybe you can reflect on this statement. We do not judge God's character by event we see around us. Rather, we filter all the event we see through the prism of his loving character as revealed in the Bible. And this is a good counsel. Yes, brother. Yeah, just to add on the same, from this context, we're seeing a broken-hearted Savior. A Savior who is explaining how much he has tried out of love to preserve the life of his children. How much, you know, when he's talking like he has kept us like a hen, keeps the chick, you are seeing some form of protection just like a hen to prevent the chick from uh, being captured or being taken away by the eagle. And God is saying how he has preserved Jerusalem not to be attacked by Rome, but he's saying it is the children who have refused or they are not willing to be protected anymore. And now because of our, how can I say it, because we have now declined the glory of God, because now we have not given a heed to his protection, he's now saying that he's now leave us to ourselves. And now from this context, I know someone can ask how can a loving God allow his children to be destroyed. But here we are seeing a loving God willing to do everything to protect his children, but his children are not willing to be protected by their God. Amen. Yeah. Uh, brothers, are you willing to be protected by Christ? You see, when the prophecies were getting fulfilled in AD 70, mm -hmm. uh, there were Christians, there were Jewish, there were Romans, and there were so many people who were living in, in, in Jerusalem. It was a, mal, a, 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 a cosmopolitan city, uh, at least, but majority of them were Christian. And the message was that when you see Jerusalem surrounded by the Roman soldiers, flee. Him who is away, do not come in. Even if you left water, you know, yeah, that yeah. is why uh, uh, the message of the three angels' message mm -hmm. is, is preach to those who dwell. Dwelling on this world, uh, uh, allowing your life to be in all around this world sometimes may make us forget about God. And, uh, you know, where your treasures are, your heart is. Jesus mm -hmm. said that we lay our treasures in the things which are above, so that when we see this world being destroyed, surrounded by calamities, surrounded by diseases which cannot be uh, uh, treated, surrounded by sicknesses, surrounded by earthquakes, surrounded by uh, accident by the sea, by the air, by the roads, these are pointing to us that this world, is getting destroyed. Sure. But just like God protected the children of um, Israel, Israel or the, yeah. the, the Christians during this destruction of Jerusalem, he has pro, pro, uh, uh, accepted to providentially preserve Christians. Yes. How is this possible? And uh, we are seeing this one possible, number one, from the all of uh, Matthew 24. We are seeing Christ giving the disciples the sign of the second coming or the signs of the destruction in that any time they could see all this in their minds it could be aroused that something is just about to happen and that's why verse number 15 is telling them now when you shall see the about now we can read it 24, we can read 24 verse 15 verse 15 of matthew it yes. says yeah. therefore when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by daniel the prophet standing in the holy place whoever read let him understand and if you continue, then then let them stop. that are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let them who is on the housetops not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not come back to get his cloth. But who to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in the days. And the pray that your flight may not be in winter or in Sabbath. Yes, thank you for that one. Now we are seeing Christ now coming to the climax of everything and now giving them the very, very last sign. And he, you shall see the abomination of desolation taking place. Now that it is the time now to make an immediate decision. And as he is even saying, for those who are in the field, should not come back to pick anything. You need just to live and run into the mountains. Because it was not the will of Christ that any believer should perish. And as we were seeing Christ giving them all these signs. And also something to add on the same. From the Bible, from the nature of Satan, remember we are talking about the character of God. Is it love or selfishness? 
we are seeing Satan trying to paint this picture of Christ as a dictator, someone who don't want the best for his children, someone who is just ready to destroy his children because of sin. But Christ is now giving the other aspect of love, who is someone who is ready to save anyone who will listen to his voice. And that's now we are seeing the Bible painting another picture of Christ, restoring the image that is being distorted by Satan. And this is how we are seeing how love comes in this picture. Anyone who will listen to his voice and who shall know it is now time to fly into the mountains shall not be destroyed. Amen. History rec records that when the Romans uh, were fleeing in the first attack, yeah. when the uh, Christians were not yet ready to leave uh, uh, the yeah. city, yeah. Uh, God allowed the Romans to be defeated yeah. so that the children of Israel, the Christians, will flee. Away and, yeah. and 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 this is recorded in Great Controversy, uh, page thirty. Say that the promised sign had been given to the waiting Christian, and now an opportunity was offered for all of them who will to obey the Savior's warning. The event was so overruled that neither the Jews or the Romans should hinder the flight of the Christian. God prepared a space so that Christian will first leave before destruction comes. Sure. You read. Psalms 46, it says mm -hmm. that um, God is our refuge, a mm -hmm. strength and strength, mm -hmm. a very present help in time of trouble. A very present help. You know, um, I, I may not give a lot of example because of the time that we are limited in, but at times you are traveling with public and you want to board this vehicle and you just feel something is delaying you. Yeah. Delaying you and when you board the next one, after 10 or 15 minutes, you find the vehicle which you are like almost crying to board has gotten an accident. At times we want some jobs. And God is delaying this job to come just to protect us, to preserve us. Because probably when we get those jobs, there will be restrictions for, our, for, 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 for us not to worship him freely like we may have the opportunity to worship him. At times there's just a disease that is passing. We just came out of the pandemic. And there are people who die, we lost relatives, mm -hmm. but me and you are still alive, God preserves us. And therefore, we can boldly say that as God preserved the, children, the Christian in Romans' time, he is still able to preserve us this mm -hmm. time. In vain was Satan's effort to destroy the church of Christ by violence. The great controversy in which the disciples of Jesus yielded up their lives did not cease when this faithful standard bearer fell to their post. By defeat they conquered. God's workmen was slain, but his work went steadily fast. There's something I want to comment on this, that amidst persecution, we still have the faithful. Sure. Amidst persecution, amidst challenges, amidst pandemic, we will still have the faithful. Act chapter 2, verse 41. Act, Act chapter 2, two verse, verse 41. My brothers and sisters, Amidst persecution, we will still have God's faithful ones. They who have said, we will not obey men, but will obey God. Amidst persecution, they are God's faithful ones. Let's read. 2 verse 41, it says, Then they, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added, they were added into them about 3,000 souls. Yeah, this is a time when people are getting killed. Disciples are killed. But as, as, the, as many are killed, many, many are converted. Are and as many are converted, they go out to preach. And as they preach, you read even Acts chapter 4, verse 4, it says, however, many of those who heard the word believed. And the number of the men came to be about 5,000. So many were multiplying. In other words, Sometimes persecutions are good. Sometimes challenges are good. Because God can use those persecutions, those challenges, to advance the gospel. Brothers, are you facing any persecution in your life at your place of work? The disciples faced threats, yeah. imprisonment, persecution, even death itself. And yet the power of the Holy Spirit courageously proclaimed the resurrected Christ. We just came out of Easter recently here in commemoration of uh, Christ's resurrection. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, Christ's resurrection did not change anything. It only fulfilled the prophecy that Christ had to die for our sins 
so that I who was meant to be uh, to uh, to be eternally lost, we can have an access to eternal life. Christ's death and resurrection should make us faithful amid this persecution. What do you think? Sure, and adding on the same, just before persecution, as we begin Acts chapter 1, we are seeing the promise of the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit who was to prepare the church for the persecution. He is the Holy Spirit who was to empower them. To the result, even when the temptation now come, when the persecution come, they could not change their mind because the one who was in them. They were not now, they were not full of self, but they were full of the Holy Spirit was there to empower them. Amen. And now during the time of trial, their character was revealed. They were not building the character during persecution. The Holy Spirit had prepared them already for the persecution. And now during persecution, now the spirit of the Holy Spirit was being revealed in them. And that's why we are seeing them doing such marvelous works. And now through the Holy Spirit, they are come to stand. It means even in our times, without the Holy Spirit, when persecution shall come, some of us will deny the faith. And also something we are learning from uh, the book of Acts generally. We are seeing the persecution coming, but in each and every generation, we are faithful men of God. Yeah. There is no single generation that we can now send and say, God didn't get any person. During Amen. the time of Noah, he got a man. Yes. During the time of Job, he got a man. During the time of Job, he asked Satan, have you considered my faithful man, Job? Yeah. In each when the and sons every... of men came. Yes. Mm. Satan also joined them. Yeah. But not to mm. attend the function, but yeah. to father mm. his malicious devices. Sure. He always attends mm. the congregation of the faithful. Mm. As these faithful are mm. standing amid persecution, mm. Satan always come in. And we have said that if he cannot come in through threat, yeah. through persecution, mm. through killing, he come to then compromise. he compromises. Exactly. A very sad state. Sure. A very sad state. Maybe you can add something on this. Yeah, just what I was saying, just all in all, a faithful people shall stand. A faithful people shall stand. And uh, my prayer is now may the God depend on us in this our generation. That we may remain faithful. Sure. Amen. Br viewers and brothers, mm. faithfulness is what Christ cry about. Yeah. In Luke 18, he asks, when I shall come, shall I will faith? I find faith? Yeah. Faith is believing that God will do what he promised he's going to do. Sure. You know, we don't wake up because we are going to pick oxygen. And mm. we're going to pick life yeah. so that we put in our body mm. and we wake up. No, mm. we, uh, we, we don't wake up because we, se we had set an alarm. Mm. We don't wake up because uh, we were to attend a meeting by 8 and therefore have to wake up early. Yeah, Some yeah. people also mm. plan to attend meetings by 8 and they never wake up. Sure. We wake mm. up because we believed that tomorrow we are going to wake up. So it's by and, grace. And, 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 and that waking up mm. is believing in Christ doing mm. his merits. In, in us yeah. and, and and therefore mm. uh, the secrets of the disciples mm. to stand faithful was in Acts verse, chapter 1 verses 8 one and thou eight. shall receive, receive power, power when the Holy Spirit comes mm. and you will go into Judea it, uh, 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 Samaria, Samaria and all the corners of the world friends this is the time we need this Holy Spirit sure and you know, Joel prophesied about mm. it and says that in latter days, the rain shall fall. Okay, the Holy Spirit rain. will come upon the children of Israel, the children of God, the, the Christians. The sad story about this is that he may be falling already on some people, mm. whereas we don't know. Sure. I pray that this Holy Spirit may fall on us so that we can go out to care for our families, to care for our community. Acts chapter 2 verses 44 to 47. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Yes, read it. 2 verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the two apostles' doctrine. Verse 44. Verse 44. Yes. Acts 2, 44. And all, th and all that believed were together and had all things in common. Yes. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men and every man had need. 46. And uh, they continued daily with one accord in, tem in the temple and breaking the bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and with single of heart. 47. Praising God and having favor with all men. And the Lord added to the church daily, such should be saved. Amen. Um, 
uh, Acts 6 verse 1, let me also read it. Uh, now in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrew by the Hellenist because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, let it not be, uh, let it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. We should not, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good rep reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint uh, over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And verse 5, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Procreas, Nicanor, Timon, Paminas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostle, and when they were, had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Friends, the multiplication of the first church did not occur because of preaching the gospel, but because the disciples lived the gospel. Sure. What they were preaching could be manifested mm -hmm. in their lives. What they were saying was manifested in their life. They were not drinking water you are not preaching water, preaching water and, 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 taking, and taking wine. Yeah. Or uh, drinking wine, <laughs> whereas preaching water, yeah. they live the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And salvation. To them that believe. Sure. To us first, to the, to the Greeks. Gospel. And Paul said that I'm a debtor, yeah. that I need to preach this gospel. Mm. You know, uh, it is not about what we are saying, per se. It's not about mm. the pulpit. It's not about this lesson we are discussing. But it's about our lives. I pray that God may transform our lives. Sure. And when this transformation occurs, then people will see. You know, when Christ was getting crucified, Peter was around. Mm -hmm. And he denied the Christ. And people went to him and asked him, you look like one of them. Mm -hmm. It's not Peter was saying that I am one of them. No. Peter looked like one of them. And this has been the issue. God wants us to look like him. Sure. And you know, looking like him will enable us to care for our community. We will collect what we have and give the needy, assist those in the society, and they will see the true communion with Christ. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and they may have it abundantly. Christ longs for us to be physically healthy, mentally alert, emotionally stable, and spiritually whole. This world is facing a numerous uh, crisis, be it spiritual, be it emotional. Today we talk about mental health, sure. be it physical. But God wants us to live a life that live that, that manifests love, a legacy of love. John 13, verse 35, as we close. John 13, verse 35, as we close. 13, 35. Yes. By this shall all men know that he are my disciples. Yeah. If you love one another. If you love one another, people will. It is the greatest preaching, the greatest sermon is a loving and a lovable Christian. Sure. If we love one another. A legacy of love. First John chapter 4, verses 21 says, And this is the commandment which we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Brother, love was the norm of the early Christian community. It is supposed to be the norm of our community. Maybe you want to tell us why we don't have love one another. Do Christians love one another? Because somebody posted something on the social media that when you consider drunkards, you put them together, you find that drunkards love one another more than those in the church. Yeah. That when you come to church, you'll find that your brothers does it like I don't know whether this is true, but me, I think it's not true. Tell us. <laughs> This one, I, I, I don't, it is not that true because from the world they do it uh, in the aspect of, uh, it comes clearly in Kiswahili, Kweneleza, something to benefit self. Yeah. But now in the Christian world, we see the lack of it somehow 
because we have not yet acknowledged the God that we have. Because we see from the early church, before they could go and preach for others, they first lived the gospel. And that's why their action could preach even more. And now coming before going and loving the world, we see that he shall be known to be my disciples if you first love one another. It is love between me and you as fellow Christians. The greatest revelation of God's love was demonstrated and has been demonstrated in history. Sure. He has preserved us. Mm. Not because we are better than those who have died, mm. but because he loves us. He has preserved people. Rodney Starks writes on the rise of Christianity as a modern historical narrative portraying love. Most of our brother Christians showed unbound love and loyalty, never sparing themselves and thinking only of one, one another. Heedless of danger, they took charge of the sick, attending to their need and ministering to them in Christ. And with them departed his life serenely, happily. For they were infected by others with disease, drawing on themselves the sickness of their neighbors and cheerfully accepting their fate. What a love. John will say this, that God so loved the world that he gave his love. May we give our lives to Christ. Maybe you have a parting shot, parting statement. From this study that we've just seen, from where we've concluded, we are seeing a selfless people. The moment you will esteem your brother to be better than yourself, then that's why we could see even this early church could go the extent of saving some other lives, yet they're losing their own life just to save someone else. That dying to self, that is the love that Christ is waiting to see in us. Because we are Christians, we need to follow his footsteps. We need to reflect his own character of the selfless love. Someone will ask, where is God when I'm facing suffering? Sure. God allows sufferings so that we may depend on him. Amen. Yeah, God allows pain so that we may depend on him. Brothers and sisters, we want to close this and we ask you, Depend on Christ. Depend on God. Depend on his love. For he will preserve you. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. In Jesus name. Amen. You may pray. We believe as we pray. Mighty Father who lives in heaven. We thank you for taking us through thy love. We thank you for reminding us the word of the old. How the apostle church used to be. And it is our prayer of God. May you grant us the seed that is thy word through thy word, and may thy Holy Spirit help the seed or the word to grow in us so that we can come to the fulfillment of giving out the fruit of the Holy Spirit that love is one of them. On our own, we can never love our brothers. On our own, we are tend to be selfish. May you now work in us so that you can now teach us to love our brothers and esteem others to be better than ourselves. May we live the gospel that we preach so that the world can be convicted that there is a man, Jesus Christ. For this is our prayer, just in believing. Amen. Amen. Amen.